हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू सेंटम एकेडमी एजुकेशन विद इमोशन आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग ग्रेट माय नेम इज दीपक अमरवानी मैथ फैकल्टी एट सेंटम एकेडमी और मेरे साथ हैं प्रवीण अग्रवाल सर और आज हम आपके लिए लेकर आए हैं आई ओ क्यू एम सोल्यूशंस द एग्जाम वॉज हेल्ड ऑन एट्थ ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी सो आज का एजेंडा क्या है We are going to solve each and every question in detail. So, please be with us to understand the concept behind solving question. कैसे question को solve करना है कहाँ पर short trick लगानी है और कैसे question को approach करना है So, let's get started. Hello everyone. Let's solve a very first and easiest question of IOQM 2024. We need to find a smallest positive integer that does not divide this given number. Let's say this number is n, which is nothing but one into two into three into four five six seven eight into nine. Now let's think about which numbers can divide this n. So clearly, I can say that n is divisible by one, two, three. Up to nine. Why? Because the factorization of n contains numbers from one to nine. So clearly, n is divisible by one to nine, right? Now, if you observe here, five into two is ten. So number is divisible by ten also. After ten, number comes eleven. Now, can I say that this number is divisible by eleven? No, I cannot because in the factorization of n, there is no factor eleven. So number is not number is not divisible by eleven. So it's very simple question. So first few questions are very easy. After that, difficulty level increases. Let's solve second question. Second question is the number of four digit odd numbers having digits one, two, three, four. So here we need a four-digit number like this: one, two, three, and four. So, guys, if you want to create a odd-digit number, its unit placed should be odd only. So here we have four numbers, and from these four numbers, we need to create four-digit number. So how many numbers are odd here? One and three are odd. So here you can fill this place by two numbers. One or three, so you have two choices to fill units place. Now remaining three places can be filled as. See, already you have taken one number here. One number you have already taken, and they are saying that each occurring exactly once. So if I am choosing, let's say I am choosing one here. So one cannot be part in the first place, second place, or third place. So now you have three numbers left. So first place you can fill by three ways. Now already this place and last place may you have already chosen two numbers. So remaining these two places can be filled by two ways and one way. So final answer is nothing but three into two into one into two. So final answer is. Twelve. So there are four-digit numbers. Twelve four-digit numbers are there that you can make using one, two, three, four, and they are odd numbers. So let's solve next question. Question number three is the number obtained by taking the last two digits of five to the power twenty twenty four. See the question paper is I O Q M twenty twenty. Four. So Olympiad papers का यही pattern होता है जिस साल में paper पूछा गया है उसी साल को question में include किया जाता है So how to solve this question? Actually there is no solution is not required. Any power of फाइव फाइव to the any power and n is greater than टू then last digits last two digits digits are always ट्वेंटी फाइव फाइव स्क्वायर और फाइव स्क्वायर में भी लास्ट टू डिजिट्स ट्वेंटी फाइव एन ग्रेटर देन और इक्वल टू टू ले सकते हो फाइव क्यूब वन ट्वेंटी फाइव फाइव टू दी पावर फोर सिक्स ट्वेंटी फाइव एन सो ऑन एन सो ऑन 
सो फाइव टू दी पावर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर विल ऑल्सो गिव यू लास्ट टू डिजिट एज ट्वेंटी फाइव ओनली इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सॉल्व इट यू कैन यूज चाइनीज रिमाइंडर थियरम टू सॉल्व बट इतना टाइम क्यों वेस्ट करना ओके सो आंसर इज ट्वेंटी फाइव लेट्स डू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन फोर इज लेट ए बी सी डी बी अ क्वाड्रिलेटरल एंड ए डी सी इज सेवेंटी डिग्री सो फर्स्ट लेट एस ड्रॉ अ क्वाड्रिलेटरल लाइक दिस क्वाड्रिलेटरल ए बी सी डी सो हेर इज ए बी सी एंड डी एंगल ए सी डी एंड एंगल ए डी सी बोथ आर सेवेंटी ए डी सी इज सेवेंटी डिग्री एंड एंगल ए सी डी इज ऑल्सो सेवेंटी डिग्री Now we have ACB as ten degree. ACB is this angle, and it is ten degree. Last me BAD is one hundred and ten. This whole angle BAD is one hundred and ten degrees. So what we need to find here is angle CAB. We need this angle, angle CAB, this blue line. So how to solve it? So if I am able to find this angle. I will subtract it from one hundred and ten. So in triangle ADC, we know that seventy plus seventy plus x is equal to one hundred and eighty. One hundred and eighty. So x is forty. So this angle is nothing but forty degree. So if I want, if I want this angle, which is angle CAB, I need to subtract forty from one hundred and ten. So final answer is nothing but one one zero, one hundred and ten minus forty. So seventy degree. So this angle is seventy degree, which is required angle. Let's solve next question. Question number five is let A is equal to x by y plus y by z plus z by x. Let B is equals to this value and C is equal to value in terms of x, y, and z. Here we need to find value of mod of AB minus C. So first four questions were really easy. Fifth question को थोड़ा सा difficult बनाने की कोशिश की है. So let us write C first, which is uh, value which you can see is very long value. X by y plus y by z into y by z plus z by x into z by x. Plus x by y. So here I need my answer in terms of a b minus c. So if I am able to convert x y z in terms of a b c, so I will reach my answer. So here you can see x by y, x by y plus y by z here also. x by y plus y by z here also. So I can use a minus z by x instead of this. so i will write here a minus z by x similarly i can see y by z plus z by x y by z plus z by x here so i can use these two values which is a minus x by y a minus x by y similarly third term can be written as a minus what we have z by x plus x by y z by x plus x by y so i can use a minus y by z Here I will use a minus y by z. So now just do multiplication. So if we multiply these two terms, what you will get? You will get a square minus z by x plus x by y into a plus z by y. Now you have to multiply this term with last term, which is a minus y by z. Let's do again multiplication. What you will get is a cube. This term multiplied with a. Again, you will multiply a square with y by z, so you will get a square, a square. Here you will get a square y by z. Let's multiply second term with bracket, so you will get minus of a square z by x plus x by y. Again. You multiply negative with negative, so you will get positive. But here, one thing will be there when y by z is multiplied with z by x, z z will cancel out. You will get y by x. So here you will get y by x plus here again 
when y by z is multiplied with x by y y y will cancel you will get x by z so here i will write x by z into a correct so now you need to multiply third term which is nothing but a into z by y minus minus z by y into y by z is nothing but one but plus minus minus one so now let's do simplification further simplification may what you will get a cube minus if you take a square common from this term and this term so it is nothing but a square y by z plus z by x y by z plus z by x plus x by y and here i can take common a from this term and this term so again i will get here positive a y by x plus x by z plus z by y minus 1 now let's get back to the question again here x by y plus y by z plus z by x is nothing but a so this value is actually a value so i can write this value as a so it is nothing but a cube minus a square into a is a cube again this value this value y by x plus x by z y by x plus x by z plus z by y it is nothing but b value so here i will write a into b it is nothing but a b and last is minus one this entire value is c so what i will get here guys i will get c is equal to this a cube a cube is cancelled so c is equal to a b minus one which is nothing but a b minus c is equal to is equal to one that we need mod of a b minus one so mod of a b minus c is nothing but one so answer is one so calculation part is more otherwise question is not that tough let's do next question here is question number six find the number of triples of real numbers a comma b comma c we need to find a solution for the given equation so first of all write the equation a to the power 20 b to the power 20 plus c to the power 20 is equal to a to the power 24 plus b to the power 24 plus c to the power 24 now this value is actually equals to 1 now it is visible that this a to the power 20 b to the power 20 and c to the power 20 these are positive numbers and sum of positive numbers is 1 sum of positive numbers is 1 here so if i want to find values of abc it is clearly understandable that mod of a is less than or equals to 1 if you take value more than 1 then sum of these three numbers cannot be one so all the values actually value of a and b and c all are less than one or equal to one if i'm taking equal to one so other two values will be zero other two values will be zero so what we will do here mod of a is less than or equals to one mod of b less than or equals to one and mod of c is less than or equals to one so that is our condition so using this equation i can write a to the power 20 minus a to the power 24 plus b to the power 20 minus b to the power 24 plus c to the power 20 minus c to the power 24 is nothing but zero take a to the power 20 common so what you will get a to the power 20 1 minus a to the power 4 plus b to the power 20 1 minus b to the power 4 plus c to the power 20 1 minus c to the power 4 is equals to 0 now here we know that mod of a is less than or equals to 1 so this value is actually this value is actually less than 1 and if you subtract it from 1 you will get you will get answer as positive or if you take it as 1 if this value is 1 this will be 0 if you take it 1 it will be 0 this will be 0 so if i am taking this value less than 1 this will be positive and this value is also positive and we know that we know that a to the power 20 is positive this is positive and this is also positive so all the terms are positive 
and sum of positive terms is zero which means this value is actually zero this entire value is also zero so what we can write here is a to the power 20 1 minus a to the power 4 is equals to 0 so a is 0 or or a to the power 4 is equal to 1 so a is equal to 0 or a is equals to plus or minus 1 so similarly what we will get here is b is equals to 0 or b is equals to plus or minus 1 similarly what we will get c is equals to 0 or c is equals to plus or minus 1 so how many how many triples we will get here so if i take if i take a is equal to plus or minus 1 b and c will be 0 then only you will get this answer as 1 then you will get this answer as 1. If you put minus 1 here, 0 plus 0. Minus 1 cut to the power 20 is 1. 0 plus 0, you will get one answer. So this is 1. So actually these are two pairs. Plus 1, minus 1. Again, if you take this 0, B if you take plus or minus 1, C will be 0. Again, if you take this as 0, this as 0 and C value is plus or minus 1. So total, you will get 2 plus 2 plus 2. So there are total 6 triples. 6 triples. So answer is 6. Let's solve next question. 7 is determine the sum of all possible surface areas of a cube whose vertices are 1 2 0 and 3 comma 3 comma 2 so there will be three cases what type of cases here you can see three different images so let me explain these three cases so first case this is second case and this is third case so here we are given two vertices 1 comma 2 comma 0 and 3 comma 3 comma 2 so first case is when side length is a side length is a and both the vertex both the vertices are on the same line same surface same line which means adjacent vertices are adjacent to each other another case is on the same surface but vertices are diagonally connected like this here vertices are connected diagonally and in the third case vertex is in the first surface and second vertex is in the different surface and they are connected diagonally like this so there will be three cases adjacent diagonally and different surface may diagonally so we need to find area for this case second case and third case and add them so let's find area for the first so what is the area of cube area of a cube is nothing but 6 into a square where a is side length so side length a we need to find here how to find a side length it is nothing but a root of 3 minus 1 whole square which is 2 whole square 4 plus 3 minus 2 which is 1 1 square is 1 2 minus 0 which is 2 whole square is 4 so ultimately you will get a as 3 so area is 6 into 3 square so which is nothing but 3 square into 3 square 9 into 6 is 54 is the area of first case now let's find area for second case to find area for second case we need length a we need length of the side but here vertex vertices are placed diagonally we know that distance between these two point distance between this point and this point is nothing but three so let's say this length is x length this diagonal length is x length which is nothing but root of root of if you apply pythagoras here it is nothing but a square plus a square so what you will get you will get answer as root 2a but we know that distance between this point and this point is nothing but 3 so 3 is equal to root 2 times a so a is nothing but 3 by root 2 so area is equal to 
सिक्स इंटू नाइन बाय टू नाइन बाय टू सो टू थ्री जा सिक्स नाइन थ्री जा ट्वेंटी सेवन इज माई आंसर फॉर सेकेंड केस लेट्स डिस्कस थर्ड केस लेट एस डिस्कस थर्ड केस इन थर्ड केस वॉटिस आर प्लेस्ड लाइक दिस लाइक दिस अगेन द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन टू पॉइंट्स डिस्टेंस बिटवीन टू पॉइंट्स इज लेट से एक्स एंड एक्स वी ऑलरेडी फाउंड आउट इन द फर्स्ट केस विच इज थ्री फर्स्ट केस विच इज थ्री नाउ ऑल्सो वी नो दैट इफ यू थिंक दिस ट्राइंगल इन विच दिस लेंथ इज ए साइड लेंथ now we already found out in the second case that diagonal length is root 2 times a and this length is x so using pythagoras here what we will get we will get root of 2a square plus a square is equal to 3 so answer is root 3 a is equal to 3 so a is equal to root 3 is the side length for third case so area for this cube Area for this is six into root three square, which is three. So six three is a eighteen is my answer. So if you add all the areas, which is fifty four plus twenty seven plus eighteen, what I will get? Fifty four plus twenty seven plus eighteen. So eight four is a twelve plus seven, nine one five plus two seven plus two nine. So ninety nine square units is my. answer or 99 unit square let's solve next question here is the question number 8 let n be the smallest integer such that sum of digits of n is divisible by 5 so can i say that sum of digits digits of number n number n is equal to 5p because it is divisible by 5 also sum of digits of n plus 1 sum of digits of n plus 1 so if i add 1 in the previous number 1 in this number and if i do sum of the all digits that should be also divisible by 5 let's say 5q so according to this so here is a logic can i say that if sum of the digits of number is divisible by 5 and sum of digits of n plus 1 is 5q so subtraction of if i take difference which means sum of digits digits of n n if i subtract sum of digits of n plus 1 isn't it 5p minus 5q can i say that 5p minus q which means difference difference of these two is also divisible by 5 difference is also divisible by 5 so let's start from number 1 so 1 2 3 4 5 up to 9 if you take a difference of these two numbers it is 1 is it divisible by 5 no so these two are not my numbers if you take again difference of these two it is 1 again if you take difference it is 1 why i am taking number ka difference because sum of digits of 1 is 1 sum of digits of 2 is 2 only now if you go from 9 to 10 Here is the catch. So here, sum of digits of nine is nine, and sum of digits of ten is one. And if you subtract them, you will get difference as eight, not divisible by five. So these two are not my numbers. Now, if you go from ten to eleven, again it is one, again it is one, twelve, and so on. Till ninety nine, you will get difference as one. But from ninety nine and hundred, what you will get? Sum of digits, sum of digits is eighteen, and sum of digits is one, and difference of eighteen and one is seventeen, which is also not divisible by, not divisible by, yes five. Again, if I go from two digit to three digit, hundred and one till 
triple nine triple nine difference is one but when you jump from triple nine to one thousand difference is different nine threes are 27 and this difference is one sum of digits is one and difference is 26 26 so now you have to think such a number such that difference is divisible by 5 and now when difference are changing yes see here when you go from two digit yes one digit to two digit when you go from two digit to three digit difference is different here it is 17 here it is 26 so if i choose number 9999 and 10000 yes so difference is difference of sum is this is 36 and this is 1 so this is nothing but 35 so these are two numbers in which sum of the digits not numbers not numbers sum of the digits should be divisible by 5 and their difference should be also divisible by 5 one logic is correct here 35 is divisible by 5 but individual sum is not divisible by 5 so here i can go from 10000 1 10000 2 and so on and so on so in between there will be a sum number which is divisible by yes sum of digits should be divisible by 5 here you can see every time it is when it is 999 in end 999 in end and next number with 000, zero, zero there is some change there is some change so i can uh, logically think that when i take 4999 49999 and next number which is 50000 in these two numbers sum of digits is 5 and here sum of digits is 36 plus 4 which is 40 36 plus 4 is 40 so this individual sum is divisible by 5 this individual sum is also divisible by 5 and if you take a difference of their sum which is 40 minus 5 35 and how i came to this logic because above numbers from 9999 and lesser than yes 99000 when you change the digit 99999 these two numbers are between them before that number will not change the difference will not change difference will be always same so these are two numbers and what they are asking what are the first two digits of n so this is my n and this is next number which is n plus one and what are the first two digits of number n so first two digit of the number n is 49 so answer is 49 that will be your final answer let's solve next question so question number nine is about chess consider the grid of points x m comma n let's say this is x and this is y coordinate zero less than or equals to mn less than four so here i can draw, draw grids like this 0 1 2 3 and 4 this is also vertically 0 1 2 3 and 4 so what we need to find here we say a pair of ab comma cd in a x is a night move pair they are talking about night move in chess they have explained here a plus or minus 2 b plus or minus 1 so we know that let's say night is here night is here so it can go like this it can go horizontally 2 and vertically 1 or it can go vertically 1 and horizontally 2 right plus or minus everything is fine or vertically 2 horizontally 1 something like this or this and this so here what is my path my path is this 0 to this point which is 0 1 2 3 4 and this is 0 1 2 3 4 so knight can go to this point and also this point so here you can find two pairs 
Now you can calculate individually for each point. Let's say night is here. Night is here. So from this point, it can go to right and this point. Then it can go to this point horizontally one and then vertically two. Also, it can go to this point also. So here you can find one, two and three pairs. Similarly, for this point, you can find four, four and then again three and again two. So this is one way you will find you can find for each and every point each and every point so you can get the answer but another way is another way is c here you can see when you take one when you take one rectangle when you take one rectangle like this rectangle like this here you will get one pair and another pair like this this and this so purple pair and white pair so each rectangle each rectangle will give you two pairs two pairs right so how many rectangles are there that we need to find so one rectangle this is two and this is third rectangle so here you have three rectangles three again three three and three so three fours are 12 rectangles 12 rectangles but they are horizontal so 12 rectangles will give you yes 24 pairs 24 pairs but what we also have we have c or c plus or minus 1 you can take yes vertical rectangles also so here you will take 1 2 and third rectangle so similarly again vertically you have 12 more rectangles right 12 rectangles which are vertical and they will give you 24 pairs yes what they are asking me they are asking me pair of points not individual points so again 24 pairs plus 24 pairs so you will get 48 pairs of night move night move so answer is 48 so the only logic is each rectangle will give you two pairs of night move okay let's solve another question here is question number 10 determine the number of positive integral values of p for which there exist triangle sides a b and c which satisfy this equation so first of all let us simplify the equation can i write a square plus p square b square plus 9 b square plus 9 c square minus 6 a b minus 6 p b c so here you can observe that here you will find a square 9 b square minus 6 a b is nothing but a minus 3 b whole square and similarly p square b square 9 c square and this is nothing but p b minus p b minus c 3 c whole square and this value is equal to 0 and guys if sum of positive numbers is 0 then individually this should be 0 a minus 3b is equal to 0 and pb minus 3c is also equals to 0 so can i say that a equals to 3b and pb equals to also 3c yes correct so what we can find here is p is nothing but 3c p is nothing but 3c by b now guys what we are given that a b and c are sides of triangle so in sides of triangle we know that a plus b sum of two sides is always greater than third side so if i take a plus b let us take a as 3b and b as b greater than c but what is the value of c value of c you can take it as pb by 3 you can take it pb by 3 yes here c is nothing but pb by 3 
so b b b get cancelled out so what you will get 3 plus 1 4 3 is a 12 greater than p so p is less than 12 and what we need to find here we need to find a value of p so value of p is clearly less than 12 but we also know other condition other condition for triangle is difference of the sides difference of the sides is always less than third side which is mod of b minus a less than c so what is b minus a let us take b as b minus a as again 3b less than or equals to what is c pb by 3 so here i can clearly take b common 1 minus b so this will be 2 so 3 to the 6 less than p so p is greater than 6 so when p is greater than 6 and p is less than 12 so how many integral values are there we need to find integral value what i mean by integral integer values so which is greater than 6 and less than 12 so they are 7 8 9 10 and 11 so how many values are there so there are total five values five values so answer is five integers so answer is five hello everyone this is praveen agrawal your maths teacher and in this video we are going to see iukm 2024 question number 11 to 20 questions which are three marks each so question number 11 says that the positive real numbers a comma b comma c satisfy these two equations let us name these two equations as one and two and whenever you see wordings like positive real numbers one can think of a and gm inequality which states that arithmetic mean of n positive real numbers is always greater than or equal to the geometric mean. now this is used under two circumstances when either sum is constant and product is to be minimized maximized or when Product is constant, sum is to be minimized. As of now, uh, for these quantities, neither the sum nor the product is constant. So, let's try to modify these equations a little bit. And for that, let us add these two equations and let's look at the common denominators. So, if you look at 2b plus 1, the numerator will become a plus 1. Similarly, if you look at 3c plus 1 denominator, numerator will become 2b plus 1. And similarly, if you look at a plus 1 as denominator, numerator is 3c plus 1. And on the right hand side, you will get a 3. Now, let us apply a, m, g, m inequality on these three quantities. And because a, b, c are positive real numbers, then so will be these quantities. So, we can say that using a, m is greater than or equals to g, m. Then a plus 1 upon 2b plus 1 plus 2b plus 1 upon 3c plus 1 plus 3c plus 1 upon a plus 1 upon 3 will be greater than or equals to their product raised to the power 1 by 3. Their product will be a plus 1 upon 2b plus 1 into 2b plus 1 upon 3c plus 1 into 3c plus 1 upon a plus 1. And now you will see that their product is constant because a plus 1, 2b plus 1 and 3c plus 1 get cancelled. So this is just 1 and 1 raised to the power 1 by 3 will also be 1 and if you cross multiply by 3 you will get that my a plus 1 upon 2b plus 1 plus 2b plus 1 upon 3c plus 1 plus 3c plus 1 upon a plus 1 is greater than or equals to 3. And coincidentally, this is exactly equal to 3. So in AMGM inequality, the equality occurs if and only if all participating quantities are equal. And if all these three are equal, then each of them, because their sum is 3, will have to be equal to 1. So this equality will occur equality if and only if a plus 1 upon 2b plus 1 is equals to 2b plus 1 upon 3c plus 1 equals to 3c plus 1 upon a plus 1 and when each of them is equals to this will give me a equals to 2b equals to 3c and if i substitute all of these values in let us say equation number one then i will get 3a upon a plus 1 equals to 1 if you cross multiply and simplify you will get a equals to half and if a is half then b will be 1 by 4 and then c will be 1 by 6. Now what is asked in the question is 1 by a plus 1 by b plus 1 by c. So that will be 2 plus 4 plus 6 that is 12. So my final answer is 12 for this question. So this was slightly tricky but a doable question if you know AMGM inequality and its applications. 
Next question is of geometry. Consider a square ABCD of side length 16. Let E and F be points on CD such so that CE equals to EF equals to FE. Now that means E and F trisect the side CD. So each of the line segment will be one third of the total segment which is 16 by 3. Now one thing to observe here in this question is that it's a question of classic similarity, similar triangle. So triangle MEF is similar to triangle MAB. Because in this square any two opposite sides are parallel and these are alternate interior angles. So you can say that this angle will be equal to this angle. This angle F will be equal to angle P. And these are vertically opposite angles. So all three angles are equal. That's why the triangles are similar. And if the triangles are similar, then let us also do one more construction where we draw altitude of both the triangles, but in one go. All right. And because this total altitude is also parallel to these sides and same as these sides, so its length will also be 16. Total length of, let me name this as PQ. Total length of PQ will also be same as 16 units. And it is divided to two parts, PM plus mq equals to 16. Let me write as equation number one. And because these two triangles are similar, then their altitudes will be in the same ratio as their sides. And the ratio of the sides is one third because 16 by 3 upon 16 is 1 by 3. Also, my pm upon mq is equals to 16 by 3 upon 16. That is 1 by 3. So your mq will be equal to 3 times pm. And if you substitute that in here, you will get, let me write as equation number 2, using 1 and 2. You will get 4 pm equals to 16, so pm equals to 4 and similarly mq will become 3 into 4, that is 12. This is 12, this is 16, I know base of the triangle, I know height of the triangle, that the area of triangle simply formula is. Area of triangle MAB is half into base is 16 into height is 12. That will turn out to be 96 square units. So the area of triangle MAB is 96. Alright, in the next question, we have been given three positive integers A, B, C, where A is strictly greater than C and they satisfy these two conditions. Now, because the relation is given between A and C, let me try to eliminate variable B from equation 2 and put it 1. So, from equation 2, I can write B as 32 minus A minus C and substitute it in equation number 1 at both of these places here as well as here. So, my equation will become AC plus 32 minus A minus C plus C is equals to 32 minus A minus C times C plus A plus 66. C and minus C get cancelled. If I bring all of the terms on the left hand side, it will become kind of a quadratic equation in C. So that quadratic equation in C will be C square plus 2AC minus 32C and minus 2A minus 34 equals to 0. Now let us solve this quadratic in C using quadratic formula. So if I apply the quadratic formula, then the value of C will be uh, minus of B, which will be minus of 2. If I take common, then A minus 16 will remain uh, plus or minus root of B square, which will be 2 to the 4 times A minus 16 whole square minus 4 into minus 2 times A plus 17 whole divided by 2. What I can do is I can cancel one of the 2's and 4 if I take, an, take it outside uh, of the square root it will come out as 2. Then my C will simply be minus of A minus 16 which I can also write as 16 minus A. C is 16 minus A plus or minus a square root of, let me expand each of these terms. A square minus 32A plus 256 and plus uh, it will be 2A plus 34. Now for this to be an integer, for C to be an integer, the discriminant, whatever is inside the square root, must be a perfect square. So let me take this quantity separately. My D, which is A square minus 30A plus 256 plus 34 is 290. This must be perfect square of an integer, where M belongs to an integer. Now if I try to make this also a perfect square, I will need to separate 225 from it. So it will become A minus 15. The whole square plus a 65 will remain separately. So plus 65 is equals to m square. And if I rearrange this, I will get a minus 15 whole square minus m square equals to minus 65, which will give me the factors of a minus 15 minus m, 
into a minus 15 plus m equals to minus let me also write as 13 into 5. So the right hand side can be factorized in multiple ways. Let me try those different different ways. And in the left hand side both of them are integers. So both of them have to be either let's say minus 64 plus 1. Sorry minus 65 plus 1 or 65 minus 1. Or minus 13 5 or 13 minus 5. Let me apply these combinations where I write a minus 15m plus m is equals to minus 13 as equation 1 and a minus 15 minus m is equals to 5. If I solve both of these, what do I do is I add both of them and divide it by 2. Then my a minus 15 will become minus 13 plus 5 is minus 8, minus 8 by 2 is minus 4, then a I'll get as 11. And if I put a equals to 11, I will get the value of m as minus 9. And if I substitute both of these values, to find the value of c, then my c will become 16 minus 11 minus of minus 9, which will turn out to be 5 plus 9, which is 40. Now look at this combination when a is 11 and c is 14. But the question says that a must be greater than c, so we will have to reject this combination because 11 is less than 14 and not greater than. So let's look at the other combination. The next combination would be where we put a minus 15 plus m is equals to 13 and a minus 15 minus m is equals to minus 5. Again equation 1, equation 2. Again if you add and divide by 2. I will get a minus 15 is equals to plus 4 this time. So I will get a equals to 19. If you substitute a equals to 19 then you will get m as 9. And if you substitute both of these values then you will get c is equals to 16 minus 19 and a plus 9. So this will become 9 plus 3 that is 12. Which very much satisfy this equation as well. And if your full triplet let me write this time. So if a is 90, c is 12 then what will be the value of b? b will be 32 minus 19 minus 12. 19 plus 12 is how much? 9 plus 2 11. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. 32 minus 31 is 1. So all a, b, c are turning out to be positive integers where a is greater than c. So yes, this is the only possible combination when all three will be positive integers satisfying all these equations, all these constraints. You can try other two combinations as well on your own where you try to put one of them as minus 65, another as 1. And one time one is 65 and another is minus 1. You won't get all three of them as positive integers satisfying these both equations. So the only possible combination will be when a equals to 90. Alright, in this question I have made a diagram which let me share with you. So here we have made a grid where this is the origin, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. Now what, ha what is happening is that in each turn, suppose initially there are 3 power 80 particles at 0 comma 0. And in each turn one third particle are going each just above the place just on the top right and just on the top left. And this process continues. Again in the next turn what will happen? Whatever uh, particles are there on this space, one third will go on top, one third will go towards the top right and one third will go towards the top left. Similarly whatever particles were here, one third on top, one third on top right, one third on top left and similarly whatever, whatever number of particles were here, one third on top, one third on top right and one third on top left. It's, and they have also given what is the number on each. For example, if you do one third of 3 power 80, it will become 3 power 79 on each of these. Now, if you observe slightly more closely, you will find that on the extreme left hand point and the extreme right hand point, if you directly draw diagonal, then the only source for getting particles is from bottom left. No other source. But if you take any other intermediate particle, suppose if you take just next to this, then there are two sources, either from bottom or from bottom left. Similarly here also either from bottom or from bottom left. So on the end point it is very very simple that here it will become one third each time. So this will become 3 power 78, this will become 3 power 77, 3 power 76 and so on. If 4 comma 4 is getting 3 power 76 then you can see that using the containing the same pattern it's a GP with common ratio 1 third so here 1 will remain and here 3 will remain and so on. 
now let us go to the uh, all the blocks adjacent to it and here let me mark the numbers as well so these adjacent blocks address is 0 comma 1 or 1 comma 2 or 2 comma 3 or 3 comma 4 because i am ultimately interested in knowing how many particles are there on 79 comma 80 so we'll observe a pattern and we'll generalize that pattern then all right so the pattern is how many particles are there at 0 comma 1 or 1 comma 2 or 2 comma 3 or 3 comma 4 from here from 78 comma 79 and 79 comma 80 so at 0 comma 1 we observe there are uh, 3 power 79 particles now as i already explained at 1 comma 2 the particles can come from two places either directly below or from bottom left directly below there were 3 power 79 particles here also we had 3 power 79 particles. Let me do one third of each of these. So it will be 3 power 78 plus 3 power 78, which in total will come 2 into 3 power 78. All right, this is clear. 2 into 3 power 78. So if I go to the next block, which is 2 comma 3, one third of this and one third of this will come. One third of 2 into 3 power 78 is. 2 into 3 power 77 and 1 third of 3 power 78 is 1 more 3 power 77. So in total it will become 3 power 3 into 3 power 77. Now if you wish you can combine both of them and write it as 3 power 78 but I am going to keep it as it is because then it will be easier to observe the pattern. Now if I look at the number of particles at 3 comma 4 again it can come from two places either directly below or from bottom left. I have already observed that here the number of particles are 3 into 3 power 77. So one third of that will be 3 power 77 and one third of 3 power 77 will be 3 power 76. Now if you take 3 power 76 common then 3 plus 1 will remain common so it will become 4 into 3 power 76. Let us see if you are able to identify the pattern till this point. If you are not able to identify one now, we can go one more step let's say. 4 comma 5 will get one third of this which will be 4 into 3 power 75 plus 3 power 75. So this will be 5 into 3 power 75. So this pattern 0 comma 1, 3 power 79, 1 comma 2, 2 into 3 power 78, 3 into 3 power 77, 4 into 3 power 76, 3, 5 into 3 power 75 is an arithmetic or geometric progression which is in, in short called as EGP. And if you want to write its general term, its general term will simply be, uh, suppose here we are talking about 1, so here it is 1 into 3 power 80 minus 1. If you are talking about 2, then 2 into 3 power 80 minus 2. So Tn will be n into 3 power 80 minus n. So if you want to know the 80th term of this, then T80 will become 80 into 3 power 0, which will simply be 80. So the number of particles at the 79 comma 80 block will be nothing but 80. So it's about drawing the diagram, understanding what the question is saying. And calculatively it's very easy as soon as you understand that what is to be calculated and what's the pattern. All right, the next question, question 15, we have been set to let x be the set containing 20 positive integers. The smallest value of n for which any three numbers a, B, C belonging to X not necessarily distinct from the sides of an acute angle triangle. Now the way to check an acute angle triangle is through cosine rule. Suppose the largest side is C. So largest angle will also be C and cosine C formula will be A square plus B square minus C square upon 2A. And if it's an acute angle then numerator this whole thing must be positive. That means A square plus B square must be C square. There is sum of squares of two of the smallest side must be greater than the square of the largest side. This C is the largest side. So what are the overall possible smallest sides? These are n and n. So suppose these two are n and n and the largest possible side is n plus 38. If we make this triangle acute then all the remaining triangles will be acute because all the other sides are definitely greater than this and all the other sides are definitely lesser than this. So if we have made this triangle as acute then Suppose if you increase these smaller sides, increase these smaller sides, then also the triangle will remain acute. Or if you decrease this larger side, then also the triangle will remain acute, as you can see. And in order to make this triangle acute, we'll need to apply the relation that n square plus n square will be greater than equal, strictly greater than n plus 38, the whole square. 
let us solve for this. So we'll get 2n square is greater than n square plus 38 into 2 is uh, 76n plus 38 whole square. If I take everything on left hand side, n square minus 76n. In order to make it a perfect square, I will need to add a 7, 38 square. And on the right hand side, it will, it will become 2 into 38 the whole square. So, but the sign is not equal to but strictly greater than. So I will get n minus 38 whole square uh, is greater than 2 into 38 whole square. So what will happen is either n minus 38 will be less than minus 38 root 2 or n minus 38 will be greater than 38 root 2. Now this is not possible because otherwise n will become negative while n is naturally it's a positive integer. So this is not possible. So n the only possibility is n have to be greater than 38 times root 2 plus 1 which is 38 times 1.4 plus 1 is 2.4 and 38 times 2.4 if we calculate separately. So 8 4 is a 32, carry 3, 4 3 is a 12, 13 14 15, 8 2 is a 16 and 7 and this will turn out to be 2. 11, 9, 91.2. So this whole thing is greater than 91.2. And which is the integer which is just greater than 91.2? So the smallest value of n, the smallest feasible value of n which will satisfy all the given constraint will be 92. So the answer of this question will be 92. All right, next question is a simple question of functional equations. You see what's the relation between x and 3 minus x is? If I replace x with 3 minus x, then this will convert into this and this will convert into this. So what we will do is we will assume f of 3 minus x and f of x is a and b and eliminate f of 3 minus x just to get fx. So let me rewrite this equation again. The original equation was a 3, 4 times f of 3 minus x plus 3 times f of x equals to x square. Suppose this equation 1. Now let me do the transformation where I replace x with 3 minus x. So I will get 4 times f of x plus 3 times f of 3 minus x equals to 3 minus x the whole square. Now let me eliminate f 3 minus x from equation 2 and put it into 1. So from equation 2 I will get f of 3 minus x is equals to this is nothing but x square minus 6x plus 9. Uh, minus 4 times fx whole divided by 3 and substitute that in equation number 1. So what will I get is my equation number 1 will become 4 by 3 times 4 by 3 times x square minus 6x plus 9 minus 4 times f of x plus 3 times f of x is equals to uh, x square. So what we can do is we can take the terms of fx all on one side. So we will have 3 minus 4 for the 16 by 3. 3 minus 16 by 3 times fx plus 4 by 3 times plus 4 by 3x square minus 4 to the 8x plus 9 4 to the 12 is equals to x square. And if I keep fx on one side, rest everything on one side, then I will get f of x times 7 by 3. Because 9 minus 16 is minus 7, which will become plus 7 if I take it on the other side. And on one side, it will remain as x square by 3 minus 8x plus 12. And if you multiply by 3, divide by 7, you will get fx is equals to 1 by 7 times x square minus 24x plus 36. Now what we can do, now what we can do is, we can calculate the value of f27 minus f25 because almost everything is there. So f of 27 minus f of 25 will be 1 seventh of 27 square minus 25 square minus 24 times 27 minus 25 plus 36 minus 36. So this will get cancelled. 27 minus 25 is simply 2 and 2 into 24 is 48. So what will you get is 1 by 7 times and this if you apply a plus b to a minus b it is 52 into 2 
it is 104 minus uh, 24 into 2 is 48. So what we have is 1 seventh of and this is nothing but 6 and 9 minus 4 is 5 and 56 by 7 is nothing but 8. So the answer to this question will be 0, 8 and this will be the perfect integer, no need to uh, you know, approximate or anything. So let's look at the next question here. Consider an isosceles triangle ABC with side BC equals to 30, CA equals to AB equals to 20. And if you try to calculate whether it's acute or obtuse, so you will find it is an obtuse angle triangle. Now I made the diagram with all the further information that is given in the question. Let me read that out. Let D be the foot of perpendicular from A to BC. So it's D and it will divide the Opposite length is two equal parts, so each of the BD and DC will be other than 15 cm each. Let me write that. Centimeter or whatever units it is. Each of them BD will be 15 and so will be DC. 15. Next is, uh, let uh, D be the foot of a pen. Let M be the midpoint of a, AD. So AM equals to MD. Lot of information. Next, let PQ be a chord of the circumcircle of triangle ABC. So we drew circumcircle of triangle ABC. And we know because it's an obtuse angle triangle, its circumcenter will lie outside the triangle ABC. But at the same time, because it's an isosceles triangle, it will lie on the altitude through A. So it will lie on extended AD. Suppose this is O. Then uh, this is chord of the uh, uh, circumcircle ABC so that M lies on PQ and PQ is parallel to BC. So we draw a line passing through M and parallel to BC. The chord PQ length we have to find out. So I have drawn a couple of extra lines along with all of these lines. I have joined O with B and C. I have also joined O with this P and Q. Now let us apply Pythagoras theorem on some of the triangles. So in this triangle ADC, I know the side length AC is 20. And at the same time, I know CD. So I can find the length of the altitude AD. Once I have that, I can practically find AM. Okay. One more thing that I want to find is the radius of the circumcircle. For that, I can use the formula R is equals to ABC by 4 delta. And for delta, I can use Hero's formula, which is root of S, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. So my S will be semi perimeter, which will be 30 plus 20 plus 20 divided by 2 that is 70 by 2 that is 35 and if I calculate R it will be 30 into 20 into 20 divided by 4 times root of 35 into 35 minus 30 will be 5 into 35 minus 20 will be 15 so 15 into 15 if I simplify terms a little bit I'll get 30 into 5 into 20 divided by 5 into 15 I can take common so root 5 will remain 15 twos are 35 gets cancelled with 5. So what remains is 40 by root 7. So the circum radius of circumcircle of triangle ABC is nothing but uh, 20 into 2 it will be 40 by root 7. 40 by root 7 units. Alright, next step is to find AD. To find AD, I can use Pythagoras theorem simply. So that will be root of uh, 30 square minus rather 20 square minus 15 square. So AD is 20 square minus 15 square, that's how much. I can practically take a 5 common, so what will remain is 4 square minus 3 square, which is 16 minus 9, which is 7. So 5 root 7 is AD. And because M is the midpoint of AD, I know that AM as well as MD will be, so my AM equals to MD will be equals to 5 root 7 by 2. Now, because I want to know PQ, it's in my favor to know this length OM. And uh, I know that OQ is radius. So then I will be able to find MQ, which is half of PQ. And that's my strategy for finding length of PQ. So next thing that I found is, want to found is OM. My length OM will be OA minus AM. OA is nothing but the radius, circum radius, which is 40 by root 7 minus AM is 5 root 7 by 2. If I simplify this, I will get uh, 14 to 2 is 80 minus 7, 5 is 35 by 2 root 7, which is nothing but 45 by 2 root 7. And now I am ready to find PQ. 
so as the last stage my pq will be 2 times mq and mq will be root of oq square minus om square oq is nothing but circum radius oq whole square minus om whole square i know all of these quantities this is 2 times root of 40 by root 7 whole square minus om is 45 by 2 root 7 the whole square if i continue the calculation over here what will i get is this is nothing but 2 times i can take a 2 root 7 outside of the bracket and in the numerator i can also take a 5 outside of the bracket so what will remain is 5 uh, by 40 is 40 by 5 is 8 8 is square is 64 minus here it will be 9 by 2 whole square which will be 36 by 36 by uh, sorry 9 is 81 so 81 whole divided by 2 is our this 2 gets cancelled. Let's continue simplify things. I think if I have taken a 2 already common. So students, now let's have a look at question number 21 to 30. Which are 5 marks each and are significantly difficult than either 2 mark questions or 3 marks questions. So question number 21 is an integer n is such that greatest integer function of n by 9 is a 3 digit number with equal digits. So the only three digit numbers with equal digits are a box of n by 9 can be either triple 1 or triple 2 or triple 3 or so on till 999. At the same time box of n minus 172 divided by 4 is a four digit number uh, with 2024 written in some order. So if I write all of these numbers, all of these permutations, the smallest one will probably be 2024. And the last will be 4220. So let me consider these two cases and if need be, we'll consider more intermediate cases. Now if that is the case, then my n minus 172 will lie between 2024 and 2025. And 2024, this by 4, to 2025, 2024 inclusive, 2024 exclusive. So if I multiply by 4, then 4096 uh, will be uh, less than, so 4, 4 is a 16, 4 to the 8 plus 1, 9, 0, 4 to the 8, it will be 8096. Right, from 8096 to n minus 172 to it will be 108, 8100 0, 0, and if I add 172, 6 plus 2 will be 8, 9 plus 7 will be uh, 16, 1 plus 1 will be 2, 8 to 6, 8 less than equals to n, strictly less than, if you add 172 to 8100, 0, 0, you'll get 2, 7, and 1 plus 1 is 2, and this is 8, 8272. So n is at least this. Now in which of these cases will n be at least this? If you try to do a little bit of mathematics, then if you take, so if I take n by 9 as triple 1, then n by 9 will lie from 111 to 112. Uh, in this case, it will be significantly less than this. How significantly less than? It will lie between 999 uh, to n to 9 to the 18, 9 ones are 9 plus 1, 10, 100, 0, it's significantly less. So we will have to go to near triple 8 or triple 9. So let me try. Box of n by 9 is 888. So in that case, my n by 9 should have to lie between 888 to 889. If I try this, I will get 98. If I calculate this bigger number, n be smaller than 99 is 81. 72 plus 8 is 80. 72 plus 8 is 80. 8001, which is also less than this. From this constraint, the minimum, bare minimum value of n is 8 to 6, 8. And if, even if I try and from any number to 111 to triple 8, it will be less than this. So, none of them are possible. The only possibility is that my n by n will have to be 99. There is no other possibility. So, one thing is for sure fixed. That my box of n by 9 must be 999. That means n by 9 must lie between triple 9 to 1000. And if that is the case, then n will lie between 99 is 81. 99 is 81 plus 8 is 81 plus 8 is 89 and 9 9 is 81 plus 8 is 89 so 8991 to 9000 
let me write it as equation number one we are going to remember this now if we look at this then uh, this is a four digit number with the digits 2024 written in some order now here 8272 is actually lesser than this so i will hold, have to go to the next higher permutation of this probably 2042 Okay, next higher permutations will probably be 2, 2, 0, 4, then 2, 2, 4, 0. So, we will explore all of them gradually. Let me explore this one. So, if box of n minus 172 by 4 is this 2, 0, 4, 2, then what will I get? Okay, it will take some calculation. So, uh, let us try that. My n minus 172. Why don't I write as n by 4 box of n by 4 and 172 is clearly divisible by 4. 4, 4 is 16 and 4 is at 12 box of n by 4 minus 43 it is and if it is uh, you know equals to 2042 then this will lie between 2042 2043 and if i add 43 to all my i think i should remove the box now my n by 4 will, will lie between 8520852 to 20 8, 6 and then n will lie between 5, 4 is at 20, 32, 33, 34 and 8, 3, 4, 0, 2 and this will be 6, 4 is at 24, 8, 4 is at 32, then 33, 34 and 4 to 8, 8, 3, 4, 4. Now are we getting anything common? Again not getting anything common, still we are very little. Why don't we go to the next extreme which is like 4, 2, 2, 0. Should we go to that extreme? In that case, 4, 2, 2, 0 into 4 will become 16,000 which will be way beyond. So let us go gradually only. What if we go to 2, 2, 0, 4? If I try 2, 2, 0, 4. If only I try 2, 2, 0, 4 plus 42 into 4 and sorry plus 43 into 4 so on till n till 2, 2, 0, 4 plus 43 uh, times 4. Now, 2, 2, 0, 4, 2, 2, 0, 5. I think this should be 2, 2, 0, 4. Yeah. So, 2, 2, 0, 4 plus 43 is 4 plus 3, 7. 4, 2, 2 into 4. This will be 7, 4 is at 28. 4, 4 is at 16, 17, 18. And this will be 4 to the 8 plus 1, 9 and 4 to the 8, 8, 9, 8, 8. I think we are going to get some intersection from this for sure. And if I calculate this, it will turn out to be, uh, if I add just 4 to this, yes, there will be a difference of 4 in this number and this number. So I can be a bit fast. 8, 9, 8, 8 to n to 8, 9, 9, 2. And if you calculate the intersection of these. Now, if you take any higher permutation, they will be significantly more than this. So the only intersection that you will get from this and this will be n is equals to 8, 9, 9, 1, which is present in this set as well as this set. So my number is 8, 9, 9, 1, and the last two digits are 91. All right. Let's look at the next question. So in this one, we have been told that in triangle ABC, angle BAC is 90 degrees. So it's a right angle triangle. Let me make a right angle triangle. Where A is the right angle triangle. A is the right angle. Suppose this is my A. This is B. This is C. This angle is 90 degrees. Let D be a point on BC so that AB plus BD. AB plus BD equals to AC plus CD. Suppose this is my point D. So AB plus BD is AC plus CD. Uh, that can mean several things. So suppose this side let me call small c. This side let me call small b. And this side is small a. And if I assume this has x then this will be a minus x. So if I apply the constraint that b plus a minus x will be equals to c plus x. Then I will get the value of x x will turn out to be my 2x will be b plus a minus c. So x will be b plus a minus c by 2. My x will turn out to be b plus a minus c by 2 which can also be denoted as s minus c divided by 2. So I get my x actually. x is s minus c by 2 and if you do a minus x 
a minus x will be a minus a plus b minus c divided by 2. So it will be 2a minus a minus b plus c divided by 2. So this will become uh, a plus c minus b by 2 which is s minus b by 2. So this length is nothing but s minus b by 2. Alright, we know these ratios now. Now what else is given? We have been given that BD ratio DC. BD ratio DC is 2 ratio 1. And we also know that BD, BD ratio DC is nothing but S minus C upon BD ratio DC is S minus C upon S minus B. So let me make that. BD upon DC is equals to. And why don't we write everything in terms of purely A, B and C. And AC is small b and AB is small c. So we are going to eliminate A from the equation. So BD by DC is 2 by 1. Which is also the same as BD is how much? We have checked that BD is x. This is BD equals to and this is AC. No, BD upon DC. This is DC now. So BD is B plus A minus C by 2 and DC is a plus c minus b by 2. Let us cross multiply. So we will get a simple linear equation between a, b and c. 2a plus 2c minus 2b is equals to b plus a minus c. If I take terms of a on one side, rest everything on one side, I will get a is equals to how much? Uh, 2a plus 2c minus 2b. So I will get 3b minus 3c. And if I square on both sides, because I know one of the relations is a square is equals to b square plus c square. So let me square. a square will be equals to 9 times b minus c the whole square. And this should be equals to b square plus c square. So overall I will get 8b square minus 9 to the 18bc plus 8c square equals to 0. If I cancel it to, I will get 4b square minus 9bc plus 4c square equals to 0. Now which ratio do we want to know? We want to know the ratio b by c. So let me divide by c square. So we will get a quadratic in b by c whole square. 4 times b by c the whole square minus 9 times b by c plus 4 equals to 0. So using quadratic formula we can find b by c is 9 plus or minus square root of. But here it's a plus sign so let me keep a plus sign only. So 9 plus or minus root of b square which is 81 minus 4, 4, 4. Uh, which will become 64 whole divided by 4 to the 8. So this will, this will be 9 plus root of 81 minus 64 is 5. 11 minus 4 is uh, 11 minus 4 is 7 actually. Uh, 7 and root 17. Yeah. 9 plus root 17 divided by 8. Now we got the value of m, p and n. So if you find the sum m plus n plus p it will be uh, m is 9 plus n is 8 plus p is 17 which is 34. So my answer will be equals to 30. This was a relatively doable and easy question of geometry in the 5 marker questions. Alright next question is consider the 14 numbers 1 power 4, 2 power 4 and so on till 14 power 4. Now the smallest natural number n such that they leave distinct remainders when divided by n is. So if I look at all of these numbers. First of all let me write here perfect squares. What will be 1 square, 2 square, 3 square and so on. 4 square, 5 square, 6 square, 7 square and let me write 8 square, 9 square, 10 square, 11 square. 12 square, 13 square, 14 square. So this will be 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121. 12 square will be, 12 square will be 144, 13 square will be 116 and 14 square will be 196. And gradually we are going to go to, uh, you know what, gradually we are going to go to n power 4. But before that let us consider some of the facts. What is the smallest natural number n such that they leave distinct remainder? So 
using pigeonhole principle one can say that n must be greater than 14 because if n is less than or equals to 14 of course you will get two numbers which which will be leave the same remainder when divided by n and uh, basically both of them will leave the same remainder when divided by n while we want distinct remainders now what if n was 15 what if n was 15 so what we want is distinct remainders when any of these raised to the power of 4 leave the same remainder when dividing by 15 so one way of saying it is that if suppose these numbers are some uh, a1 a2 and so on till a14 all right and if both of them leave the same remainder when dividing by 15 then in the language of modular arithmetic we can state that suppose if a1 is equals to suppose some m mod 15 all right and suppose a1 is equals to a2 mod 15 suppose we have two numbers which leave the same remainder when dividing by 15 then what can we say about them then a1 minus a2 will be a multiple of 15 and are there any pair so that we get a multiple of 15 for sure there are if you talk about the difference of 7 square and 8 square they will be a multiple of 15 how come you see if you find this difference of any two consecutive perfect square, it will be an odd number. So difference of these two will be uh, 3, uh, difference of these two will be a multiple of 5, difference of these two will be 7, 9, 11, 13, difference of 7 square and 8 square will be 15, gear difference will be 17, similarly 19, 21, okay, 23, this will be 27. Uh, I think I left some number 25 I left so this will be 25 and this will be 27 so if I take any odd number till 27 we will get two numbers will be which will be leaving the same remainder when dividing by any of these odd numbers and we shouldn't even consider even numbers because if you consider even numbers till at least 27 then suppose if you take n equals to 16 then you will get at least two numbers which will be you know divisible by 2 all right, at least two numbers which will be divisible by two and their difference 16 also you will get. How can you get your difference as 16? Uh, suppose again you will get two numbers whose uh, difference will be multiple of 16. So suppose any ai minus aj is multiple of 16. Now both of them could be odd or both of them could be even as well. But uh, how will you get 16? as a difference is uh, 16 or a multiple of 16 actually ai minus aj is some multiple of 16 the argument should be at least half of them are even right that is 2 square 4 square 6 square and 14 square they are even so even if you talk about those even numbers but why even numbers only what if i calculate the difference of the remaining quantities what if i calculate difference of one square with three square then i will get a number which is a multiple of four okay i all i need to do is find two numbers whose difference will be a multiple of four square so uh, let me find two such pairs so three square and seven square their difference is how much their difference is multiple of uh, 4 square are we sure let's take 4 square and 8 square and yes 4 square and 8 square their difference will for sure be multiple of 16 so this is out of the picture similarly uh, we can reject so we rejected 15 we rejected 16 we rejected 17 what about n equals to 18 can we get two numbers whose difference of the squares is 18? How can we try that? So 18 difference will be of what do we have to try to do? So that either the sum, sum of two numbers is 18 or difference of two numbers is 18 that will do the job. Because if you take ai minus aj books, ai itself is some k square and this is some j square. So i square minus j square. 
if I factorize it, which will be i plus j times i minus j. Now, either the sum of any of these two numbers or difference of any of these two numbers is 18 or it's multiple, then the job is done. So, if you take 10 and 8, the job will be done. And you can check also that 100 minus 64 is how much? 36, which is very much a multiple of 18. So, 18 is out of the picture. 19 is out of the picture. 20 is out of the picture because sum of two numbers or difference of two numbers, you can consider 21 and 1 difference is 20. So, 20 is out of the picture. Like that, we'll cross off 21, we'll cross off 22. Why 22? Because 21 plus 1. So 22 is out of the picture, 23 is out of the picture, 24 is also out of the picture because 23 plus 1. Now, yes. So if you do, now 22 basically, uh, let me talk again about 20. So multiple of 20, how can we get? If sum of any of these two numbers is 20, so we can take 6 and 14, sum is 20. Uh, 14 and 7 sum is 21, 14 and 8 sum is 22. So all the numbers till 27 will be rejected basically using this we can extrapolate. Now what about 28? Can we get a product of 28? So suppose this time the sum of any two numbers will not be but maybe sum is divisible by 2 and difference is divisible by 14. So, which are two numbers whose i plus j is 2 and uh, rather i minus j is 2 and i plus j is i minus j equals to 2 and i plus j equals to 14. In this case, my if you divide by 2, then i will become 13 and j will become, let's check again, sum divided by 2, 16 by 2 is 8, i equals to 8, j equals to 6. So difference of 8 square and 6 square will be multiple of 28. 28 is out of the picture. 29. Can we have two numbers where uh, the difference of squares or sum of squares is 29 or multiple of 29. So I have i plus j into i minus j equals to some 29k. So are we getting 29 somehow? It need not be from consecutive numbers only. I they can be from non-consecutive numbers also. So, if I try to calculate all of these products, uh, 49 and 49 minus 16. So, what are the multiples of 29? It's 29. So, let me calculate just the number greater than 36. And what is the difference of 36 and 29? It is 7. So, that's not happening. Okay, next number is 58. Are there any two numbers whose difference is 58? How about uh, 64 and something? 64 minus 4 is 16. So, alright, this is not working. 29 into 3. How much is 29 into 3? 9 3 is a 27. 9 3 is a 27. And 3 2 is a 6, 7, 8. 87. Is there, are there any two numbers whose difference is 87? Now, they may be consecutive or they may be non-consecutive. Now, difference 29 or 58. Uh, 21, the difference is 21, 169 minus 100, 169 minus 121, 48, difference 87, 9 minus 2, 169 minus 81, difference 7, how can we have 87, 29 and 3. Could the answer be 29? Can we, if we divide 29 by all of these numbers, what will be the remainder? So let's quickly check for 29 basically. Now we know that n power 4, if we divide n power 4, so we can just square each of these numbers and divide by 29. Now again, in order to do that, we are going to use little bit of modular arithmetic. Because whichever are numbers less than 29, we can directly square them. But whichever are the numbers which are greater than 29, we have rejected all the numbers from 1 to 27. That much is done. Now all we have to check is does 29 work? That is if I divide each of the number power 4, then am I getting a different remainder? Let's quickly check about that. Now the remainder will be from 0 to 28 and these are 14 different numbers. So let us see if that's a possibility or are there any pair using which we are getting the same remainder?
So 29 when 1 power 4. Now here let me write n power 4. n power 4 and remainder by 29. So the list is going to be a bit extended. And I am only going to write n power 4 mod 29. First of all let me write n square mod 29. n square uh, percentage 29 what's the remainder? Here it's 1, here it's 4, 9, 16, 25. Uh, 25 is equivalent to minus 4 also. 16 is equivalent to minus 13 also. Uh, 36. 36 minus 29 is 7. Uh, 49 minus 29 is 20. Or which is equivalent to minus 6 as well. Uh, 29. 64. So 58. 64. 64 minus 58 is 6. So this is close to 6. And I think I got it. These two, if I square them now, if I square now 49 and 64, uh, what if I talk about the difference when I square them, then they will both leave the same remainder when divided by 29. So what will be n power 4? n power 4 in this case also will be 36 and in this case also will be 36. So both of them will leave the same remainder when dividing by 29. So that is why 29 is out of the picture. Now 30 is clearly out of the picture, 30, too many combinations are possible. So either you can say uh, 2 into 15 or you can say 6 into 5 or you can even say 30 into 1 or you can say 10 into 3. Now which of these combinations will be possible? Either that or you know uh, two numbers which leave the same remainder when dividing by 30. So 25, this is 5, this is 10. Uh, 30 so 29 is out of the picture because I saw that 7 and 8 power 4 are both congruent to uh, 0 modulo 29 no congruent to the same number mod 29 which is 36 which is the same as 39 minus 26 which is 7 basically the conclusion was 7 power 4 is equals to 8 power 4 mod 29 which is the same as uh, 7 mod 29 Alright, now 1 square is 1, let's calculate mod 13. n square mod 30, it will be 1, it will be 16, 9 nines are 81, which is the same as 9 nines are 81, 32 is 60, which is the same as 21, which is the same as minus 9, and 16 is the same as minus 14, alright, so far so good. 16, this is 14 square, which is 196, and this is the same as 16 basically. So I think here we failed. If you talk about 2 power 4, which will be 81 and 4 power 4, which will be how much? 4 power 4 will be 4 4s are. 4 4s are 16 and 16 16 is 256. 256 minus 81. Will it be a multiple of 30? Where are we going wrong with this? I think I went a little bit ahead. Here it's only n square, but I need to go to n power 4. So as far as 16 is concerned, if I divide 14, 4 square which is 16, now 16 is minus 14, 16 is identical to minus 14. Let's slowly get there. 4 divided by 30 is simply 4, 9 divided by 30 is 9, 16 by 30 is 16 only which you can also see minus 14. Uh, mod 30, 25 is 25 which is also minus 5 mod 30, 36 is 6 mod 30, 49 is 19 mod 30, 64 is 4 mod 30, this is also 4 mod 30, this is also 4 mod 30, so they will become congruent basically. And you can see that 8 power 4 minus 2 power 4 is 8 square minus 2 square times 8 square plus 2 square. Now. 8 square minus 2 square is 8 minus 2 times 8 plus 2. As you can see, this is 6 into 10, 60, which is very much divisible by 30. So 30 is also out of the picture. And finally, if you talk about 31, let's just check it for 31. The last phase. So once you check that, you will find that it is 31 is indeed that number. But let me show it, let me prove it. That all of them will leave different remainders when divided by 31. So first of all, n square mod 31 will be 1, 4, 9, 
16, which is the equivalent to minus 15 mod 31. This will be uh, 25. 25 will be equivalent to 25, which is equivalent to minus 6 mod 31. 36, this is 5. This is 49 minus 31 is 18. 62, this is uh, 2. This is the same as 62. 81 minus 62 is 90. Uh, 31 into 3 is 93. So this will be uh, 7 actually. 31 into 3 is 93. So 7, 121, 1, uh, 24. This will be congruent to minus 3. And uh, so 124, this will be equivalent to 20. Uh, this will be 5. 5 is a 5, 5 trees are 15. Uh, so this will be 14 and this will be equivalent to 196 minus 6, 6, 6, 6 trees are 18. 186. So this will be 30. Anyway, if we talk about now n power 4 mod 31. So n power 4 will be nothing but this is square. So this will be 1, 4 square will be 16, 9 square is 81. 15 square is 2, 25, 6 square is 36. 5 square is 25, 18 square is 3, 24, 2 square is 4, 19 square is 3, 61, 49, this is 9, this is 400, this is 14 is 196 and 13 is 169. Now, ideally remainder, let's calculate. Now, this is the same. This is also, this is equivalent to mod of 5, this is 25, this is the same. This is the same, this is the same. If you divide 49 by 31, what's the remainder? 49 minus 31 is 9 minus 1 is 8, 18. So, so far we have 1, 16, 4, 18, uh, 5, which are all distinct. Now, 31 mod 81 will be 90, uh, 62 and 81 minus 62 will be 11 minus 2 will be 9 and this will be 19. So, this is congruent to 19. Alright, luckily so far we are getting all different numbers. Now minus 15 square is 225 and 225 divided by 31 if we find the remainder. 7, 7 ones are 7, 7 threes are 21 and 15 minus 7 is 8. So this is the same as 8, again different. 25 is again different. 324 divided by 31, 310. 324 minus 310 is 14. This is distinct from all the previous numbers. You know what? Uh, this is 19 and 19 is the same as minus 12 actually. And minus 12 will be 144. Or if you want to divide 361 by 31. First of all, it will be divided by 31 times 51. Then it will be again divisible by 31 times. What will remain is 20. Do we have 20 so far? No, 20 is not there in any of the circle numbers. This is taken care of. 9 is taken care of. 9 is distinct from all. 400 by 31. So this will be 90 by 31. And 90 minus uh, 31 into 2 is 62. This will turn out to be 10 minus 2 is 8. And this is 28. 28 is of course different from all of these. Uh, 196 as we calculated from 31 times 6 will be 186. 186 minus 196. 10 is different. And... Uh, 150, so 5 ones are 5, 5 trees are 15, 169 minus 155 is how much? 169 minus 155, 5 ones are 5 and 5 trees are 15. Are we sure that we are getting the remainder 14 when dividing by 31 when we divide? So 49, 31. 49 minus 31 is how much? 49 minus 31 is uh, 1818. 18 is square is 324. 324, if I divide by 31, what's the remainder I get? 1 times and we get 31 and 14, we get 14 as remainder. And 169, what's the difference of 169 and four, uh, 324? If I subtract, now let me make sure that I have calculated this accurately. 14 square was 196. If I divide 196 or if I subtract 186 from 196, 
there i have made a small mistake because 6 ones are 6 6 threes are 18 so it should be equal to 10 and 10 square should be uh, 100 and this is 7 which is different from all so that we have proved that the uh, smallest such number n is 30 now there could be some other trick of number theory using which this can be solved in a smaller way but that's how i solve it without using any advanced theorem of number theory purely using basic math and remainder All right, let's look at the next question. We have the set of all polynomials whose coefficients are in the set 0, 1. And let qx be x cube plus x plus 1. Then the number of polynomials px in f of degree 14 such that product px into qx is also in f. So first of all, let me imagine that let the polynomial px could be some a 14 x power 14. Now because it's a polynomial of degree 14 and a14 can be either 0 and 1 and it cannot be 0 so it have to be 1. So it will simply be x power 14 plus a13 x power 13 plus a12 x power 12 and so on till plus a2 x square plus a1 x plus a0 where each of these numbers a1, a2 and so on till a13 belong to either 0. Now we want, what we want is px into qx is also in f means all the coefficients even in their product are either 0 or 1. So let me talk about px into qx. px into qx if you multiply each of these terms with uh, 1 plus x plus x cube or rather x cube plus x plus 1 then the leading coefficient overall leading coefficient will be x power 17. Plus we will have x power 16 times something. Let me write that something. That something will be a13. Alright. 16. How will we get? If we multiply. Uh, or will we ever get x power 16? 14 into 2 is not there. 13 into 3 is there. So I will get a13 or, or that's it. That's the only possible combination for making x16. Or what, can, what else can we have? We have x power 15 and the coefficient of x power 15 how will you get x power 15 either uh, 1 into 1 plus a 13 so 13 14 15 16 using 13 we won't get it using 12 we might so plus a 12 and plus 11 12 13 14 that's it i think we will only get a 12 plus all right let's keep on going plus we will get x power 14 times. How will you get 14 when we multiply x power 4 with 1? So 1 plus next we will get how much? a 13 times 1 so plus a 13 or we will get a 11 times 1. And from now on you will see that there will be uh, a consistent pattern. That pattern will be x power 13 coefficient we will get when we are multiplying when we are multiplying x power 13 with 1 or x power 12 with 1 or x power 10 with 3. So we will get a 13 plus a 12 plus a 10 plus x power 12 times a 12 plus a 11 plus a 9. If I go on to last few numbers then x power 4 I will get x power 4 plus sorry a 4 plus a 3 a 4 plus a 3 plus a 1 plus x cube I will get a3 plus a1 plus a0 plus x square. How will I get x square? If and only if I am multiplying a2 with 1 or a1 with 1. So I will get a2 plus a1 plus x the only coefficient will be uh, a1 plus a0 actually a1 plus a0 and plus constant term will simply be a0 constant term will simply be now if i look at the endpoints basically so if any of them have coefficient as 1 plus something then the other coefficient will automatically have to be 0 for example if we have x power 15 times 1 plus something then because a12 lies between either 0 and 1 and if a12 becomes 1 then 1 plus 1 will become 2 and x power 15 coefficient will become other than 0 and 1. We don't want that. We want that even this is also in F. Means the, all the coefficients are either 0 or 1. They cannot be more than that. So my a12 will automatically become 0. 
because 1 plus a12 has to be less than equals to 1 greater than equals to 0 so the only possibility is that a12 will have to be 0 at the same time both of them will also have to be 0 so my a13 is 0 and so is a11 so first three coefficients are 0 all right so all the you know onus is on the remaining 11 coefficients a10 a9 a8 and so on till a0 now what about these out of these these are like 11 coefficients now we know that we are getting 3 3 coefficients in each case for example here we are getting 13 12 10 or 12 11 9 and next we will get 11 10 and 8 and so on so suppose if i keep a10 as something non zero suppose if i keep a10 as non zero uh, then my a9 will have to be zero see if i let a10 2 be equals to 1 then a9 will also have to be 0 so will be a8 and so will be a7 all right otherwise things will get here so out of any four consecutive numbers at most one can be non-zero or in other words you can say that there are, there needs to be at least three zeros between two ones there needs to be at least there are at least three zeros between any two consecutive ones any two consecutive ones this we have experience of counting using permutations and combinations this is some called something like gap method or station method so first of all i am going to ask you that what is the maximum number of ones that can we have so if i divide this number 11 by 4 i cannot have more than three ones so suppose either i have three ones and remaining eight zeros out of these 11 coefficients or I could have two ones and nine zeros or I could have one ones or ten zeros or I can have zero ones and all the 11 is zeros so all the 11 zeros and only zero one is only one case so no need to count that further only one one and remaining ten zeros of course this can be done in 11 ways any one of them is 1, rest are 0. So these were easy to count, 11 plus 1, 12. Now what I want is, let me count this first. That we have 3 1s. Uh, so other than 3 1s, we have 8 zeros. Now among those 8 zeros, because in between any 2 1s, I need 3 zeros at least. So let me subtract 3 zeros twice. Out of the 8 zeros, let me preserve 3 zeros for putting between gap of first and second one. And another three zeros for putting between gaps of first and second and third one. So if we separate these uh, six three uh, zeros, then only two zeros will remain. All right. So what we have now is suppose we have three ones. All right. And in between these three ones, we need to divide uh, two zeros. So suppose I have x one plus x two plus x three is equals to two. We have to find the number of full number solutions of this. All right. Basically, in how many ways uh, can I distribute these two zeros among the gaps of three ones? All right. Or in other words, you can also say that in how many ways can we uh, organize three ones and two zeros? So the answer will be three plus two minus one c, three uh, n plus r minus one c r minus one. So this will be six c two. That is six. All right, or will it be 5c2 let me just quickly check so suppose we have to substitute ones and three ones and between any three ones i have to apply station method basically so how i have to pick gaps basically among those three ones uh, i can substitute three ones and two zeros in 5c2 manner that is 10 ways basically and then, uh, so suppose I put these two ones, these three ones. Let me put at least three zeros here, at least three zeros here. Remaining two zeros can go anywhere. They can go here, 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 here. So they can be arranged in uh, these 10 ways. So from here we'll get 10 ways. And finally, similarly, if we have two ones, then between two ones we'll need at least three zeros. So out of these nine zeros, if I subtract three zeros, 
then how many zeros will remain? We will get six zeros. And six zeros and two ones can be arranged in eight C two ways, which is fifty six ways. All right. And so if I add all of them, I will get fifty six plus ten sixty six plus eleven seventy seven plus one seventy eight. So there was a small calculation mistake here. Uh, this uh, two ones, it will be eight C two, which is actually twenty eight and not fifty six. Eight C two is twenty eight. And if you add all of these numbers, twenty eight plus eleven plus one twelve, twelve plus ten is twenty two, twenty eight plus twenty two is fifty. So the final answer is fifty. All right, let's have a look at the next question. Question number twenty-five. It has been said that a finite set M of positive integers consists of distinct perfect squares and the number ninety-two. Now the average of numbers in M is eighty-five. If we remove ninety-two from M, then the average drops to eighty-four. If n square is the largest possible square in M, then what's the value of n? So let us assume that in the finite set of M positive integers, that the M positive integers are X one, X two, uh, X three, and so on. Let's say M is the set uh, distinct perfect squares. So why don't I call them X one is square, X two is square, and so on. So suppose there are k numbers, so X k square comma ninety two. This is my set M. Now the average. So these are k numbers. This is one number. So these are total k plus one numbers. So that while calculating average, we'll keep that in mind. Let us find the mean average. The mean or average would be x1 square plus x2 square and so on till xk square plus 92 whole divided by k plus 1 is equals to 85. Let's cross multiply this whole thing to get a relation between x1 square plus x2 square and so on till xk square plus 92 is equals to 85 times k plus. 1. Let me write as equation one. Also, it has been said that if we remove 92 from M, then the average drops to 84. That means average of all of these perfect squares is nothing but 84. So if I apply that equation, that mean of x1 square plus x2 square and so on till x k whole square, and these are just k numbers, so divide by k is equals to 84. That means x1 square plus x2 square and so on till x k square is equals to 84 k. So using equation one and two, we can practically remove this x one to x k square, which is 84 k. So we get a very simple equation that is 84 k, 84 k plus 92 is equals to 85 k plus 85. So we get k equals to a 92 minus 85, which is seven. So these are just seven perfect squares. All right, that makes our job uh, really, really simple because that narrows our search window to just seven numbers. Now let's let's dig deeper. Which seven numbers could it be? So now that we know that we have seven numbers, n square is the largest possible square in M. So let's think that suppose my uh, seven numbers. First of all, we have k equals to seven. So and we want uh, n square is the largest number, right? So my x seven square. Let us say that without loss of generality, my x1 is less than x2, and because they are distinct perfect squares, I'm taking strictly less than. Is less than x3, is less than x4, and so on till x6 is less than x7. Okay, x4 and dash dash dash, and this is equals to n square. So x7 is the largest perfect square, which is n square. Now, which are the smallest natural numbers? Let's take x1 to x6 to be 1 to 6. So just we are trying one thing where x1 is equals to one. So one is square plus two is square plus three is square plus four is square plus five is square plus six is square plus n is square. All right, and this is equals to 84 times seven because your average is 84. So what is 84 times seven? Seven fours are uh, 28, and seven eights are 56. 56 plus two is 58. 58, 58, and sum of Squares of first six natural numbers is six into seven into thirteen whole divided by six plus n square is equals to five eighty eight. 
so my n square will be equals to 588 minus 91 which is 8 minus 17 sadly it will never be perfect square but let's just get an estimate of where is it like 18 minus 9 is 9 497 so clearly this combination is not possible but we can say one thing that n square will be less than this my n square will be less than this because there is no other combination uh, which will give me these numbers as smaller so n square cannot be larger than this number and the perfect square near to this is 476 which is 24 and the next side is 526 uh, so 576 is actually 24 uh, 5 576 is 24 is square right and 23 square is 529 and 22 square is 484 so n will have to be strictly less than 23 or you can say less than equals to 22 my n cannot be greater than 22 now what if n is actually 22 then how can we adjust these squares so that we get a 484 as the next sum right what if we try what if that n is 22 now we try using some reverse engineering n equals to 22 then can we make can we find six perfect squares whose sum is let's say 484 because uh, no 588 minus 484 how much is 588 minus 484 it is 401104 so we want x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square plus x4 square plus x5 square plus x6 square is equals to uh, 104 now we saw that sum of squares still 6 square was 91 what about sum of squares still 7 square if we add another 49 to 91 91 plus 49 is how much 0 9 plus 4 is 13 plus 1 is 14. Now out of these 7 perfect squares, can I remove a single perfect square so that I get 104 as a sum? Yes, I can do that actually. If I remove 36, that is 6 square. So the earliest 5 numbers are 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square plus 5 square. In, instead of 6 square, if I take 7 square and if I add 22 square to it, this sum becomes equals to 588 and we saw that n clearly cannot be greater than 22 and n equals to 22 we get a legit solution so the answer of this question is 22 so let's have a look at question number 26 of iqm 2024 in this we have to find the sum of box of x for all real numbers x satisfying this equation is so we know one of the inequalities on box of x is that it is less than x and greater than x minus 1. Now there is an equality less than or equals to x as well. Also, if we look at the rough numbers around this polynomial, then we know that all of these numbers will be way above 1. All of the numbers will be way above 1. So even if you take cube, then equality will remain the same. So you can say that x around the solutions of this cube, x minus 1 whole cube will be less than box of x whole cube let me use the box notation whole cube less than equals to x cube so i can say that 16 plus 15x plus 15x square is less than equals to x cube and greater than x minus 1 whole cube now first let me solve the inequality on the right hand side if i solve the inequality on the right hand side then i will get now if i take a one on the other side x cube minus 1 it will become greater than 15 times x square plus x plus now observe that x square plus x plus 1 is a factor on both sides and because that is always positive we can cancel that factor so that will give me so first of all the factors of left hand side are x minus 1 times x square plus x plus 1 is greater than equals to 15 times x square plus x plus 1 this gets cancelled x minus 1 greater than equals to 15 means x is greater than equals to 16 all right that is the first result next let us try to find the roots of the other equation though they will be really irrational but still we can have an estimate so if i solve the other inequality which is x cube minus 3x square plus 3x minus 1 is strictly less than 15x square plus 15x plus 16 so uh, let me take this polynomial one side 
x cube minus 18x square minus 12x minus 17 and let me call this gx and this gx has to be less than 0. Let us try to estimate its roots. So if I substitute in, uh, g of 16, what will happen? g of 16 will clearly be negative because this 16 cube will be less than 18 into 16 whole square as so all three terms are negative. This is negative. If I try g of 17, again that will be negative because 17 cube will be less than 18 into 17 square. 18, uh, 17 cube minus 18 into uh, 17 square, so it's clearly negative. If I try g of 18, what will I do? It will be 18 cube minus 18 cube. All right, 18 cube minus 18 times 18 square is also 18 cube. Minus 12 times 18 minus 17, this is still negative. And if I calculate g of 19, this will turn out to be 19 cube minus 18 times 19 square minus 12 times 19 minus 17. This will turn out to be 19 square if I take common. 19 minus 18 is 1. Minus 12 into 19. And this is 108. Uh, 228 minus 17 which is 361 minus 228 minus 17 this is clearly positive so uh, the root of this cubic equation will lie somewhere between 18 and 19 and let us say uh, the root of this equation is x naught so we have x naught belonging to 18 comma 19 for which this will remain negative post that it will become positive so we cannot go beyond 18 beyond 19 and we have x has to be greater than 16 so if i combine both of these then the only possible values of box of x could be so box of x could be either 16 or 17 or 18. now if you try box of x to be 16 then what will you get then first of all let's do case by case case work if box of x is equals to 16 then you will get 15x square plus 15x plus 16 is equals to 16 cube. And this will give you nothing but x is equals to 16. Okay. This will give you nothing but x equals to 16. So this is one valid solution. So box of x equals to 16 will give me a valid solution. Next, let me try for box of x is equals to 17. Now if box of x is 17, then my 15. If box of x is 17, then my, uh, if I look at fx and gx, are both of them satisfied? That means, are we getting an x, which lies between uh, the desired numbers? Let's see. So what we have is 16 plus 15x plus 15x square is equals to uh, 17 cube. So if I try to, Simplify this expression. I will get 15x square plus 15x plus 15 is equals to uh, 17 cube minus 1. And if I take a 15 common, x square plus x plus 1 is equals to 17 minus 1 times 17 square plus 17 plus 1. Uh, then here what do we have here we have 15 times this here we have this times this so whatever value of x that we are getting if that lies between 17 and 18 then our job is done so uh, this value how can we see this if x is like between 17 and 18 for this expression i can calculate f of uh, 17 and f of 18 if lies between if it lies between f 17 and f 18 then my job is done so f of 17 will be uh, 15 times 17 so square plus 17 plus 1 which is clearly less than 16 into 17 square plus 17 plus 1 and if i calculate f of 18 what if i calculate f of 18 f of 18 will turn out to be 15 times 18 square plus 18 plus 1 and on the other side we have 16 times 17 square plus 17 plus 1 what you will find that this quantity clearly will be greater than this quantity so yes our 15 times x square plus x plus 1 
the quantity 17 minus 1 times 17 square plus 17 plus 1 clearly lies between f16 and f8 uh, f17 and f18 that means it's a very valid value if we want to compare let's compare it as 324 plus uh, 19 will turn out to be 9 plus 4 13 and this is 2 plus 2 4 this is 3 3 43 and this is nothing but 17 square is 289 plus 18 so 9 plus 8 17 and this is uh, 8 plus 1, 9 plus 1 10 and 3 307 now 15 into 343 and 16 into 347 uh, 16 into 7 is 12 carry 1 49 4912 and this is 45 uh, 64 and 51 5145 is clearly greater than 491 so yes box of 17 is also a valid choice box of 16 was a valid choice box of 17 was a valid choice all that we need to check is is box of x is equals to 18 also a valid choice because if that's not the valid choice then none other choice will be so let me finally just check if box of x equals to 18 a valid choice for that let me rephrase this function this i will write as 16 plus 15x plus 15x square is equals to 18 cube all right so again if i rearrange it to make it simpler 15 times x square plus x plus 1 is equals to 18 cube minus 1 which will be 18 minus 1 times 18 square plus 18 plus this probably we have already calculated 17 square plus 17 plus 1 is 307 so this is and 18 square plus 18 plus 1 is 343 so 343 uh, times 17 it is this 17 times 343 now this let me call fx again let us see if I substitute uh, x as 18 then clearly this is so f of 18 is less than f of 18 will be what by the way f of 18 will be 15 times 18 square plus 18 plus 1 it will clearly be less than 17 times uh, 18 square plus 18 plus 1 so this satisfies all we have to check if f19 is uh, greater than this or not if f19 is not greater than this then uh, things won't be good so f19 will be 15 times 19 square plus 19 plus 1 19 square is 361 plus 20 will be 381 times 15 will be 15 ones are 15 120 plus 1 121 45 45 plus 12 will be 57 5715 while 343 times 17 will be 51, 68 plus 5 is 73, 51 plus 7 is 58, 5831. So 5831, which is f of 19. Uh, I think I should have multiplied 343 by 17. Yeah, 5715, which is f 19 is actually less than 17 into 343. That's why this box of x equals to 18 won't be valid when will it be valid when f of 18 would have been less than 17 into 343 would have been less than f of 19 but what is happening is f of 19 is even less than this so this is not a valid solution so both the valid solutions are 16 box of x can be 16 or box of x can be 17 i think box of x equals to 17 was also a valid solution which we saw it from here and we had both of them the answer is 16 plus 16 32 plus 1 33 so the answer is 33 answer for this question is 33 all right everyone next let's have a look at the question number 27 this is a very nice geometric problem i've already made the diagram so the triangle abc a point p in the interior of abc is such that angle bpc minus bac is equals to angle C P A minus angle C B A is equals to angle A C A P B minus A C. Now let me assume one thing that this whole angle is nothing but delta. Alright. 
and let us sum these angles basically which angles i want to know the sum of angles f p e now they are talking about b p c no so yeah why don't i write angle b p c plus angle c p a plus angle a p c p a plus angle a p p they make a full circle so the angle sum must be 360 degrees and let me write each of the b p c c p a and a p b in terms of angle a of the triangle plus delta angle b of the triangle plus delta and angle c of the triangle plus delta so what i have is angle a plus delta plus angle b plus delta plus angle c plus delta is equals to 360 degree and we know the sum of the triangles interior angles of sum of of triangle sum is 180 degrees so my 3 delta will be 360 degrees minus 180 degrees that is 180 degrees so my delta will turn out to be 60 degrees so this sum is always 60 degrees. All right, we are going to remember this. Next, let us talk about some of the things that, because these are all right angles. This is also right angle, this is also right angle. Can you see that the A, F, P, E quadrilateral is cyclic quadrilateral? Let me write all of this. That quadrilateral, quadrilateral, A, F, P, E, not only that, Similarly, because this is also a right angle, because this is also a right angle, quadrilateral uh, C, D, P, E, and also the third triangle, which is B, D, P, F. All of them are cyclic, because sum of opposite angles is 180, 90 plus 90 is 180, and so some of the remaining two angles also has to be equals to 180. All right. Now, some more information is given about this angle is 30 degrees, all right, AP is 12 units. One more thing is, if this is a cyclic quadrilateral, and this is, AP is a chord which subtends a right angle at the circle, then it must be diameter. So, AP must be diameter of this circle, which surrounds AFPE, or even triangle AFE, then it must be the circumcircle of the triangle AFE. And the diameter of that circle is 12, so radius will be 6 units. So, uh, we want to know the area of the triangle DF. So, let us try to know more about uh, triangle DF and let's use angle G a little bit using the fact that these are like cyclic quadrilaterals. So, for that what I am going to do is let me uh, assume that this angle is let's say beta this angle is alpha which angle this angle this small angle is alpha and this small angle is gamma alpha beta gamma now using the cyclicity because this is cyclic i know that this if this angle was beta then this angle is also beta and if this angle is gamma then this angle is also gamma right both of these angles are gamma now uh if I talk about uh, this angle, this triangle PBPF, the triangle BPF is a right angle triangle. This is a right angle. So this angle is beta. I know that this angle will be 90 degrees minus beta. Let me write this P over here. If this angle is beta, this angle will be 90 degrees minus beta. And this angle will be how much? 90 degrees minus gamma. Now, if I... Uh, talk about the angle sum again okay angle sum again this whole angle bpc this whole angle uh, bpc angle bpc plus 90 degrees minus beta plus 90 degrees minus comma and plus angle let me write it as fpe is equals to 360 degrees right the only angle that remained was this one now I know one thing about angle BPC that this is 60 degrees plus angle A. So this is nothing but, uh, or let me keep it as angle BPC. Let me write angle FP is 180 degrees minus angle A. So angle BPC plus 90 plus 90 is 180 degrees minus of beta plus gamma plus this I am going to write as 180 degrees minus angle BAC. This whole thing is equals to 60 degrees. 360 degrees and I know that angle BPC minus angle BAC is 60 degrees. 
and this 180 plus 180 will get cancelled with 360 degrees and if I take beta plus gamma on one other side I'll get beta plus gamma is equals to angle B P C minus angle B A C and that is equals to 60 degrees so I got angle F D E equals to 60 degrees exactly similarly you can prove that angle D F E and angle D E F will also be 60 degrees similarly exactly similarly going by the same steps one can prove that angle D F E is equals to angle D E F is also equals to 60 degrees that clearly means that angle D E F triangle D E F is an equilateral triangle all the angles are 60 degrees so this is equilateral triangle all right so most of the question is done now all we need to do is find one of the sides and i'm going to find the side e f now how to find the sign d f for that let us use the fact that uh, a p is the diameter so a p is the diameter of circle circumscribing a f p e which also means is the diameter of the circle circumscribing triangle a f -E. So my capital R, now if diameter is 12, AP is 12, so the radius, the circumradius of the triangle I, A, A, F, E is going to be 6 units. And I know that angle A is 30 degrees, this full angle A is 30 degrees. So I can use sine rule. What does sine rule say that A upon sine A will be equal to 2 times circumradius. So I can practically find the side F. So my F will, will be 2R times sine of 30 degrees. So it will be 2 into 6 into 1 by 2. That is how much? That is 6 units. And if we know the side of a equilateral triangle, we can find the area using root 3 by 4 into A square. Side square basically. So let me write root 3 by 4 into EF square. Root 3 by 4, yeah, I can write a squared. So this will turn out to be root 3 by 4 into 6 into 6. So this will turn out to be 9 root 3 square units. And if you compare, m is 9, n is 3. So the product m into n will be 27. So the answer for this question is 27. Nice question of geometry. All right, everyone. Next, let's have a look at look at this question of number theory now we have to find the largest positive integer n less than 30 such that half of n power 8 plus 3 n power 4 minus 4 is not divisible by square of any prime number so first of all let us try to factorize this its factors will be let me call this as f of n it will be half of n power 4 plus 4 times n power 4 minus 1 we can easily subfactorize it further. So let's do that. For the first one, uh, we can write it as n square plus 2n plus 2 times n square minus 2n plus 2. So one wants a proof. You can try to make it a perfect square. For that, you will need to add a 4n square and subtract to 4n square. Then use a plus b a minus b. You'll get these factors. And factors of this will be n square minus 1 times n square plus 1. And ultimately, n square minus 1 can be further factorized it n minus 1 into n plus 1. So let me write these factors in the increasing order. So it will be half of n minus 1, n plus 1, n square plus 1, n square minus 2n plus 2, and n square plus 2n plus 2. If you want to further simplify these two expressions, you can also write them as 1 by 2 times n minus 1 times n plus 1 times n square plus 1 times n minus 1 whole square plus 1 times n plus 1 whole square plus 1. Now what do we want? The largest positive integer n less than 30 says that this is not divisible by square of any prime number. So uh, what are the squares of prime numbers? We have 2 square, we have 3 square, 5 square and these are the <coughs> Now if we keep going, we'll also have 7 square, 11 square and so on. But we didn't need to check till that much because we need only numbers less than 30. So uh, clearly uh, 29, if we try to put any odd number, then which of them will be even? If I try to put uh, case 1, if we try to put that, n is equals to odd, which is 2k plus 1, then this will be an even number. This will also be an even number. 
odd square plus one will also be an even number. And if these t are even, then even if we cancel a two with one of the even numbers, at least a factor of four will remain. If at least t are even, then it will be divisible by four, which is undesired, which is a square of a prime. So this is not acceptable. That means the number has to be even. So we can save some time and just uh, let go of all the odd numbers. Now, if we talk about even numbers, so if we talk about let's say n is equals to twenty eight or twenty six or twenty four, twenty two, twenty eighteen, if we try them one by one, what will be f of twenty eight? As soon as we get a prime factor square, we will stop. Okay, so we get half of twenty eight minus one is twenty seven into and uh, 28 plus 1 is 29 into 28 square plus 1 will be something. We'll get 28 minus 1, which is 27 square, which is 729 plus 1. 729 plus 1 is 730. Now, here this contains 3 square basically. This 2 will go away and this number contains 3 square. So even this is out of the picture very easily. Similarly, if you talk about f of 26, f of 26 then this will become half of 25 which is also contains 5 squares and 26 plus 1 27 which also contains 3 squares so this is clearly out of the picture 28 con 26 con let's calculate f of 24 if you do f of 24 then you'll get half of 24 minus 1 is 23 and 24 plus 1 is 25 again this is 5 squares so out of the picture let's keep going Let's check for 22. So if we calculate f of 22, you'll get half of 21 into 23 into 485 into 22 minus 1 is 21. 21 square is uh, 441 plus 1, 442. And this will turn out to be 22 plus 1 is 23. 23 square is 529, 529 plus 1 is 530. Now this also contains a factor of 5, this also contains a factor of 5. So this contains 5 square 7, this is not acceptable. How about f of 20? f of 20 will turn out to be half into 19 into 21 into 20 square is 400 plus 1 is 401. Into 20 minus 1 is 19, 19 square is 361 plus 1 is 362 into 20 plus 1 is 21, 21 square is 441 and plus 1 is 440. Let us see if it's any prime factor repeating twice. First of all, let's cancel this 2. So 2 ones are 2, 2 eights are 16, 2 ones are 2, 181. Okay, so what we have is 19 into 3 into 7 into 401 as it divisible by any of the other primes less than 20. Uh, let's quickly check for uh, 3 not divisible, 5 not divisible, 7 not divisible, 11 not divisible, 13 not divisible, and 17 not divisible, 19 not divisible. So it's clearly a prime. So 401 is a prime number. 181, again a prime number. And 442, we can add as 2 into 220. And 221, if we check, again a prime number. So yes, no prime has power more than one. So 20 is our desired number. The answer of this question will be simply 20. So in this question, let n be this number 2 power 19, 3 power 12. And let m denote the number of positive divisors of n square which are less than n but would not divide n. First of all, if I talk about n square, it will be 2 power 38 into 3 power 12. All right. Now the question comes that uh, how many of these uh, now 3 power 24 it will be 2 power 38, 3 power 24. If I talk about total number of divisors of n square, number of divisors, of n square it will be 38 plus 1 times 24 plus 1 which will be 39 into 25 which is 
225 carry 22 75 plus 22 is 97 975 now we want number of positive divisors of n square which are less than n. First of all, if I talk about uh, how many divisors of n square will be less than n and how many of them will be greater than n, there will be a symmetry in that. Okay. What kind of symmetry? Suppose that if a divisor d is less than n, d of n square is less than n, then first of all n by d is also a divisor. And because D is less than N, then N by D will be greater than N. N by D will be clearly, if D is less than N, then N by D will be greater than N. Because 1 by D is clearly uh, greater than 1. Uh, 1 by D will be, so N by D will be, if D is less than N, then the another division N by D will be greater than 1. N by D will be greater than 1. So N square by D, what I want to say is N square by D will be greater than N. Alright. Uh, N square by D is also a divisor, by the way. Because we are talking about divisors of N square. If D is less than N, then N square by D is also a divisor which will be greater than N. So corresponding to almost every divisor less than N, there will be a divisor greater than N. So they will have one-on-one -on -one relation between them. Only the middle divisor N will be 1. So if we separate that middle division, then rest of them will be half and half. So if I talk about number of divisors of n square which are less than n, it will be 975 minus 1 divided by 2. The middle number we are removing n and rest we are doing it half. So it will be 974 divided by 2. This will be 2 4s are 8, 2 8s are 16, 2 487. Now, if we remove the divisors of the original number from that, we want the remaining number. M is the number of positive divisors which are less than n but not would not divide n. So, from all of these divisors, let's find out number of divisors of n and we are going to separate them to get the desired answer. Number of divisors of n will be equals to 19 plus 1 into 12 plus 1. This is nothing but 19 plus 1 is 20, 20 into 13 is 260, 260. So, uh, if we talk about this number, uh, in these number n is also included. So, if I subtract 1 from this, I will get all the number of divisors less than n. This is less than or equals to n. So, if I talk about less than n, then the number will be 259. And what do we want finally? We want number of Divisors of n square which are less than n and do not divide n, it will be 487 minus 259. The desired number will be 487 minus 259 which is 17 minus 9 is 8 and 7 minus 5 is 2 and this is 128. So the answer, what is it asking? Suppose this is my number m. Then what is the number formed by taking the last two digit of m? This should be 28. The answer of this question should be 28. This number will be 228 by the way, one minor thing. So anyways, last two digits are 28. So 228 and last two digits are 28. All right, everyone, let's have a look at the last question of IUQM 2024. This says that let ABC be a right angle triangle with angle B equals to 90 degrees. Let the length of altitude BD be equals to 12 units, which I have drawn in the diagram. What is the minimum possible length of AC? given that AC and the perimeter of the triangle ABC are integers. So let me assume this angle A to be theta, then this angle will also be theta. Now suppose this is BD, of course the altitude is BD. So my AD in terms of theta would be 12 times cot theta and my CD, DC would be 12 times 10 theta. So if I talk about AC, it will be AD plus DC, that will be 12 times 10 theta plus cot theta. Now, using AMG inequality, I can clearly prove that 10 theta plus and cot theta is 1 by 10 theta is greater than or equals to 2 using AM is greater than or equals to GM and which will give me that AC is greater than or equals to 24 units. 
So let us see if AC equals to 24 is valid. What do we want is AC also to be integer and perimeter also to be integer. Now if AC is equals to 24, the equality in AMGM equality will inequality will occur when both of them are equal and both of them will be equals to 1. So if 10 theta equals to 1, that means my theta will have to be 45 degree. But in that case, unfortunately, AB and BC will be such that the perimeter won't be integer. Because if I try to find AB, uh, this will turn out to be 12 root 2 and so will be BC and in that case AB plus BC plus CA will turn out to be uh, 24 plus 24 root 2 which is not an integer so this value is unacceptable. So what is the next integer uh, just bigger than 24 it is 25 let's try to put AC is equal to 25. If I have AC is equal to 25, then uh, how can I divide it basically? Is there a value of theta for which this diagonal is also 25? And my AB and BC are also, sum of AB plus BC plus C is also integer. Let us give it a try. So if I solve for uh, this equals to 25, then the equation will turn out to be 12 times 10 square theta plus 1 by 10 theta is equals to 25 or the quality equation that will form is 12 t square minus 25 t plus 12 equals to 0. Now the factors can be factorized as 12 t square minus 16 t minus 9 t plus 12 equals to 0. So what will I get is uh, 4 t minus 3 times 3 t minus 4 equals to 0. So my 10 theta will turn out to be either 3 by 4 or 4 by 3. In any case, uh, what will, what can you say about the value of A, B and B, C? See if 10 theta is 3 by 4, then what will be my A, D? A, D will turn out to be, suppose if 10 theta is 3 by 4, then A, D was 12 cot theta that is 12 upon 3 into 4 that will turn out to be 16 units and this will turn out to be 12 into 3 by 4 that is 9 units. So this will become 16, this will become 9. If this is 12, this is 9. What will be my BC length? Root of 12 is square minus 9 is square. Sorry, root of 12 is square plus 9 is square. So the 3, 4, 5 triangle, 15. And this is 3, 4 is a 12, 4, 4 is a 16. So 5, 4 is a 20. And in this case, as you can see that these both sides are integer and so the perimeter will also be integer and AC will also be integer. So 25 satisfies all the given conditions. So the answer of this question is going to be 25. So that completes the paper. Overall, the level of the questions was uh, decent. That is first 10 questions were easier, next 10 tougher and next 10 even more tougher. Uh, the result is going to be out in the October second week. And earlier the date for RMO that is the next stage was supposedly 3rd of November. But because the result is not out yet, it's quite likely that the RMO will have to be postponed. So my guess is it will happen either in the second half of November or towards the end of November. Alright everyone, do subscribe to our channel for more such content. All the best for the next stages of Maths Olympiads. This is Praveen Agrawal, your Maths teacher. Uh, we'll bring you more such videos.